Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. Papa Powell spoke today. He had some words to say. The markets didn't like it. Well, at least Bitcoin didn't like it, but I don't think the markets really liked it either. Anyways, so we got obviously Papa Powell to talk about as far as the Fed FOMC meeting today, what happened there, the comments that he made, obviously spooked the market a little bit. Then we got a couple of stories to talk about as well. And those stories are on Hot 8 has a story out there today. Soluna has a story out as well. Uh, Bit Deer provided their May production update. We I may actually end up starting to uh, cover them if they provide the June production update as well. So I need two months where they're providing it because, uh, well, I just want to make sure that they're going to be providing. So we're going to talk about Bit Deer a little bit here. And also we have Mawson providing their finally April and May production updates. So we'll get into all of that. And as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research and I'm investing in fine coins and companies. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. But let's take a look at the markets here really quick. So the markets right now were kind of mixed today. S&P was up 0.08%. Dow Jones was down 0.68%. NASDAQ was just up 0.2%. But Bitcoin had a rough day today. It was down approximately, it was down 5.1% on the day. It closed at, actually that's Ethereum. Jeez. Bitcoin, sorry about that. Bitcoin was down 3.11% today. It closed at 25,123. We have fallen below our 200 daily moving line here, which is the blue line right there. We were battling between that and our 200 weekly moving line, which is our red line here. And obviously the bears won out a little bit here and we're falling below that. So I'm guessing our next line of support is probably gonna be the 23,800. I think there's still more room to come down. And the reason I say that is because if you look at the RSI here, on the daily, it's at 35 right now. Last time it was back here, price was higher. You go back out a little bit further, price was higher. Go back out a little bit further, price was higher at that point. And then you have to go all the way back out to here. So on the daily, it looks like we are still going to be coming back down. I think we may test this 23,800. If this doesn't hold, well, then we might be coming back down to the 21,300. Okay. And I'm seeing the same thing happening right now on the one hour chart and the four hour chart as well, where we have RSI being at the same spot. Price was higher previous times. So Trend line is going down, and the down spot is we're going to see if we're going to be able to get support here at 23,800. That's the key line to watch. Okay. Ethereum, same thing right now. Ethereum is battling also with, uh, well, it was battling with the 200 uh, daily moving line, which is the blue line here. And it has fallen below it as well. My guess is that it's going to be coming back down, possibly battling with the 200 weekly line, which is the red line here. And that is at currently at 1,548. And Bitcoin obviously was down, or Ethereum was down today at 5.1%. It closed at 1,650.84. So this is going to be kind of like our support line here. We're acting as support back here as well. You can see that, uh, you know, you can see here that the RSI is at the same spot it was pretty much back there, while price is still a little bit higher. So I'm thinking this is going to act as support for Ethereum going forward. But we'll see. Okay, now as far as the miners were mixed uh, today, well, the miners were mixed today. But one did actually really good today, surprisingly. There was no news that I saw, at least, on them. But we'll get into that. So Annie was actually, to get rid of those lines, Annie was down 3.33%. Argo was up 0.87% today. Bit Digital was up 5.48%. BitFarms was flat on the day. Cypher was up 3.59%. CleanSpark was flat on the day. Cores was down 3.79%. Digihost was up 4.29%. DMG was down 2.64%. Greenwich, however, was up almost, uh, well, it was 50%, but it almost looks like it was up almost 80, 90% on the day before it came back down a little bit. And the reason for Greenwich is, I think it was just oversold here from where it started out being at $7.41 just here in April the 18th. And you can see here the slide that it's been having ever since then. And it just got pummeled a little bit here. And then I think this was just kind of a bounce here that we saw. We'll see what happens here. But See here, Green Edge Generation Holdings reports Q1 loss. This was May 15th. Oh, I didn't see any of that information come through. Oh, this was May 15th. Uh, why are we not getting any more data? This is old. Okay, so that's old. We're in June, obviously, right now. So that's old data there. Nothing else happening here for them. Okay, next is going to be Hive. Hive was up today 0.64%. Hut was down 0.95%. Iris Energy was down 2.79%. Marathon was up 0.1%. Mawson was down 5.9%. Riot was down 1.07%, Saluna was down 1.48%, Stronghold was down 3.32%, and Terra Wolf was down 2.8%. So like I said, it was a mixed day for the miners for today. Okay, let's take a look at the network hash rate really quick, see what's going on there. And on the seven-day average, we are currently at 392 million Terra hashes. And on the one-day average, take a look at that. that wow, that has really dropped down here. 
uh, to 312 million, had a lot of miners uh, being concerned here that the price may continue to go down, possibly. And, um, it's definitely one of the lower ports, parts that we've been to here recently. The latest one was back on May 19th here, where we were at 322. So we'll see how this uh, goes forward. Okay, so that's it for all that. Let's take a look at the stories that we do have here for the miners and everything else. So first, we're going to take a look at, obviously, what the Federal Reserve had to say. So Federal Reserve holds interest rates steady, forecasts two more rate hikes like uh, this year. Um, I find this kind of odd that they're saying that they're going to um, have two more rate hikes, but we'll get into it here. Let's take a look at what they actually had to say. So the Federal Reserve held interest rates steady Wednesday, but officials signaled that they are prepared to raise rates again this year to tame stubborn inflation. The central bank maintained its benchmark interest rate in the range of 5% to 5 and a quarter. The first time since January 2022, the Fed made no change to the interest rates following a policy meeting. So that's good, right? Inflation obviously came down a little bit, or quite a bit here, in May down to 4% from 4.9 in April, which is good. So at this point, I think they should have said, we're going to hold off for right now. We're going to see how things go. And if inflation continues to be a problem, at that point, we will see about possibly raising interest rates then. But not saying, oh, we're going to raise interest rates two more times. Uh, that's just... Wrong, in my opinion. That's obviously spooked the markets. Okay, Fed officials did, however, raise the interest rates forecast for the year, signaling rates could raise to as high as 5.6%, implying two additional rate hikes are likely this year. Three officials see rates rising closer to 6%. Somebody's definitely a little bit more bearish there. And then inflation pressure continues to run high. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said at a Wednesday press conference, getting inflation down to the Fed's target has a long way to go. Well, it all depends on how the CPI data does and the P... Uh, uh, CPI and the PCI data comes in, uh, but if we get below, maybe next month we'll get like three, and a, or for June we'll get like maybe 3.8, 3.9, something like that. As long as it's coming down, I think they would be better off just holding off until they see a possibly spike in the int um, inflation. Okay, next year officials see, uh, talked about that. Uh, next year officials see interest rates falling by 100 basis points to around 4.6, higher than the 4.3 forecast in March. So that's obviously good but it's also bad because the market is seeing that as an increase okay the pause announced wednesday powell said shouldn't be called a skip what it does do he added is give the economy more time to adapt to prior hikes while letting fed officials see the full consequences of the banking turmoil that uh, whirled the financial systems in the spring so they are kind of being cautious here as far as what's going to happen going forward uh, like i said i wish they wouldn't have said that that i wish they would have just said we're going to keep an eye on it we'll see what happens if inflation starts to go back up at that point, we'll definitely look at raising rates again. But they shouldn't have just said, we're going to raise two more times. Okay, uh, but that's just my, my take on that one. So we'll see how things go. At least they didn't raise interest rates this time around. And like I said, we'll see how things go. Okay, next is going to be HUT 8. So Interior Health selects HUT 8 as data center partner for co-location high-performance computing services. So this is actually good news for them. And this is for quite a few years. Um, so let's see here. So HUD-8 has signed an agreement with an Interior Health, Trusted Health Authority that delivers public health, hospital care, long-term care, com community-based and primary health care services to people across Southern British Columbia to support their operations by delivering safe, secure, and reliable co-location services from the company's flagship Kilowana Data Center through 2028. So basically five years. So it's a nice uh, contract there that's definitely going to help them out. Uh, but it's basically, I don't know if they're going to be using their servers or if the... Uh, uh, what is it, the health, uh, interior health is going to use their own servers. But either way, they're going to be getting paid for the space uh, being used there. Okay, so I think this is good for them. It's definitely diversifying their uh, portfolio as far as revenue streams are concerned. And it's good. In my opinion, this is good for them. Okay, next, Saluna bolsters revenue potential with purchase of more than 8,250 machines to uh, power Project Dorothy one being. This is great for them. I still would, however, like to see them report their monthly production updates. They haven't done that in a while, and that's why we don't really cover them that much. But I thought this was good for them, so I thought we'd just take a look at it here. So Saluna announced the purchase of 8,250 Bitmain Ant Miners S19S, S19J Pros, and S19J Pro Plus for its Project Dorothy 1B data center in Texas. The purchase is estimated to result in 860 petahash of hash rate with an average efficiency of 29.9 joules per terahash, which isn't too bad. And the cost of... 11.25 terahash uh, dollars per terahash, inclusive of all fees, import and taxes. So that's actually a pretty good price on those. Uh, they're getting it. So it 
it's definitely nice to see them shopping in the bear market. Well, we're still kind of in a bear market, getting into a bull market. But the prices are definitely bare right now as far as miners are concerned. So that's good to see that. Okay, like I said, I wish them all the best. I wish they would just provide monthly production updates. It doesn't take much to provide those other than maybe a tweet or a couple lines in the press release that here's what the hash rate we have. Here's how much we mined. And here's where we're going. So this is good nonetheless for Soluna. BitDeer, okay. So some of you guys have asked me about to covering BitDeer. I said one of my uh, criteria for covering any of these miners is that they have, they have to provide the monthly production updates. BitDeer is starting to do that. So we're going to see. I'm going to wait until June. If they provide Junes as well, that's when I'll do a deep dive <clears throat> Excuse me, on them and have all the data back from obviously May, June, and we'll track them going forward, see how they're doing. But here's what we have as far as the information that they provided for May. So for May, operations update total manage, managing hash rate, which consists of proprietary hash rate and hosting hash rate was 18 exa hash as of May 31st. So they are would be, I mean, right now they'd be probably the second one that we would cover as far as size wise is. Uh, core would be number one, but core is in bankruptcy. So they would be the number one here as far as that is concerned. And then we would have Marathon, and we'll see where Marathon grows. Marathon's supposed to get to 23, so then they would be the biggest one there. Okay, proprietary hash rate was 5.4 exahash as of May 31st, with 4 exahash allocated to the company's self-mining business and 1.4 exahash to its cloud hash rate business. Um, I'll have to look at the books to see how profitable those sectors are uh, compared to just regular self-mining. I'm guessing not as profitable, uh, but nonetheless, it does diversify their streams a little bit. And then proprietary hash rate as of May 31st, 2023, declined by approximately 3.3 exahash from 5.7 as of March 31st, primarily attributable to optimization of the company's deployed fleet of mining machines through disposal of around 5,000 ant miners, S, uh, the S17s or the Miner 17 series, mining machines that were no longer profitable. Um, we can probably look at that to see what, uh, what, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, what their power cost is based on them being no longer profitable. Uh, we can pretty much find out what, well, it would help if they were, well, we know they took out 5,300 petahash. We could figure out what the hash rate was for the miners, and then we can plug it in the data. We could f figure that out. So maybe we'll do that if they provide the June numbers as well. Hosting hash rate was 12.6 extra hash as of May 31st. As many of you know, I'm not a big fan of hosting. Um, unless I see their numbers where they're profitable at it. But for the most part, we've seen Core being unprofitable for a long time in it. Riot, same thing. So I'm not a big fan of hosting. But we'll see. Deployed, uh, total deployed fleet was approximately 191,000 ASIC mining machines as of May 31st, including the following. So approximately 62,000 of the company's own mining machines for itself, mining business, and cloud hash rate business. So if they got 62,000 machines and they only have... 4 exahash for their self-mining, let's see here, companies own mining machines for its self-mining business and cloud hash rate, okay. So that would be 5.4, so those are probably closer to about 90 terahash per miner on average for those machines there. And approximately 129,000 uh, mining machines for the company's hosting business. So 129,000 and they got about uh, 1.26, so those are also close to about 100 terahash uh, machines there, okay. Aggregate electricity capacity was 795 megawatts across five mining data centers as of May 31st. And the company mined 283 Bitcoin in the month of May through its self-mining business. So those are all the details here. We'll obviously plug that in if they provide the June production update as well. And I'll do a full background uh, check on them. Well, I'll do a deep dive on them, go through all their numbers before, what they purchased. Potentially, if we have the information, if not, we'll use the data that we do have for them and we'll work forward from there. Okay, so that's it for BitDeer. And then let's take a look at Moss in here. So Moss Infrastructure Group Inc. announces monthly production up, uh, monthly operational update for May 2023. I did not see anything for April, but they did include the numbers here for April, so we'll use those as well, and we'll kind of go over that as well. So total installed miners increased by 133%. Total BTC mining increased 76%, so that's good there. Total installed operational capacity as of May 31st, 2023 was approximately 88 megawatts, able to support... 27,636 miners. They have diversified revenue mix generated from self-mining, which was 53% of the revenue. Hosting was only 38% of the revenue. And the energy market was only 9% of the revenue. Okay. Going down here, uh, they talk about their strategic focus for the year. And here's what we have as far as data. So in April, they mined only 38, which was less than March. Uh, but in May, they obviously went up to 67 uh, Bitcoins being mined. 
increased their miners to 13,750 from 5,888. So that's good there. And then approximately 3.48 million in monthly revenue for May. Obviously, that includes the hosting and the electricity as well. Self mining monthly revenue was 1.85. Hosting co location monthly revenue was 1.33. So that's good that their self mining is actually higher than their hosting. And then the energy market program monthly revenue approximately of uh, 300,000, which is kind of strange based on what I have them as far as how many days they were mining. I'm wondering if it's really not that profitable for them to be doing that energy market program, but maybe they have to. Okay, total power online was 88 megawatts. So we covered that as well. And everything else here is just a rehash of what they provided above. Okay, so let's take a look at the numbers that I do have for them. Mossing currently has 6.2 million shares outstanding. Stock price is about $2.55. Market cap is about 41.3 million right now. You can see here that they're, well, if you go back 12 weeks, they're down 16%. Eight weeks, they're down 12.7%. In the last four weeks, they're up 13.1%. And then last week, they were up 2.99%. So it looks like they're starting to do a little bit better here in the last four weeks. Uh, current hash rate is about 1.07 exahash, 1.08 exahash. Future hash rate is supposed to be 1.79 exahash. So they still have a little bit of growth there. They're currently about 60% installed. Hash rate growth is still about 65%. They don't huddle anything. They sell pretty much everything that they mine. And then you can see their BTC production here. They were in May of last year making 185 Bitcoins. This time around this year, they're making 67. So that's almost, what, 3x less, right? Or a third of what they were making back then. A little bit more than that, but almost a third. Uh, and they've obviously had issues where they sold facilities and miners to others back in the fall. And then you can see their monthly difference as far as what they were mining uh, Bitcoin. It's been kind of a roller coaster uh, ride, mostly being on the downside than on the upside. But finally, we got a little bit of a upside here in uh, May, which is good to see. Okay, BTC had obviously didn't have anything. Bitcoin uh, per exa hash efficiency. Uh, was the best in May of last year, 123, and then it's fallen down, went back up, fallen back down, went back up, and now it's at 62.5. Okay, Bitcoin sold. Like I said, they sell pretty much everything that they mine. Hash rate, you can see hash rate was also all over the place here. They were at 1.79 in September, then they sold a bunch in October. They got some more installed, or I don't know why that, I don't know if they got installed or they sold some more here. Not sure how that worked out, but that's how it was reported for the production updates. And then value, you can see here that they, they mined 5.88 million in May of last year. They only mined about 1.856 million in May of this year. So not a good trend line that we've seen here. Definitely want to see that continue to go up here going forward. Hash rate difference. Uh, for the most part, uh, we had a huge decline here in October, a little bit of an increase in November, and then obviously January was a decline, and now we finally have an increase in May. Uh, Bitcoin sold value was the same value as for the revenue and the last four quarters revenue you guys have seen this before when we covered their production uh, q1 results we've seen all this back here going down to the institutions here first they have institutions are now only 13 of them they're down from 18 shares held by institutions is down to 666,980 compared to 761,000 so that's only 4.64 percent of the company is owned by institutions we still have that single buy rating for them with a price target of 12 dollars for the high 750 for the average and three dollars for the low Okay, looking at the data that we do have here for them as far as what they installed, we know that they didn't install anything in April. And we had them running for about 26 and a half, 27 days on average to get to the 1.7, 1.079 million in revenue for April. May, however, we got some miners installed. So we installed these 90 terahash miners here, which are uh, 6,070 of those. And we also installed some of these 85 terahash miners as well, uh, 1,750 of those. Right, they're not providing their ha hash rate, unfortunately, so we don't know exactly what they installed, but they're providing as far as many miners they have. And these are the miners that we have here that were reported a while back. Um, so these are the kind of miners that we're using here. Okay, uh, let's see here. Going down here, they did state that they have about 20,000 miners in total. So that kind of gets us to where they would be about 1.7, 1.8 exahash roughly, right around there. Now, as far as May is concerned, May was only, they were curtailing a lot or selling electricity back. That's why I said the 300,000 for electricity uh, being sold is really small here compared to what they probably could have been uh, generated by mining. Okay, so they were operating with 23 days to 23.4 days. The new miners were installed were about 20 days. I, that's kind of the average that I use for those. And then these over here were about 24 days roughly. So we're looking at about 23 and a half, 24 days roughly 
for them mining. So that's definitely a lot of days that they were down. Not to mention that we had in May, obviously the transaction fees for Bitcoin were outrageous for a couple of days. They didn't get any added uh, revenue because of that. Um, I'm sure they were maybe uh, curtailed even more than the 23, 24 days here, possibly maybe down to 22 days or something like that, depending on when they were mining and when they were not mining and when those Bitcoin rewards were being added to, the transaction fees were being added to the Bitcoin rewards. Okay, so that's kind of what we came up with, 1.855 million. And if they mine for at least 28 days here in uh, 20, 27 days in June, there would be about 2 million in revenue. Currently based on the Bitcoin price where it's at right now, now we're cash rate everything else, but that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Things might change though. Okay, so based on all of this data that we do have here, but as far as what they mined here the last April, May, and now possibly in June, that's an estimated number, so that's what we're using up here. Last three quarters was about 10.8 million. This current quarter is an estimated 5 million. Uh, combined total about 15.8 million. 50% net income, we're looking at 7.9. PE of 8, uh, we're looking at $3.92. Now, 75% net income from gross revenue, we're looking at PE of 8 at $5.88. They're currently at $2.55. I do think they're a little bit undervalued uh, where they are right now, based on what they could be generating here going forward, and as long as they continue to grow and build out and um, find other sites as well. Okay. So that's it. So it's actually nice to see that they actually provided their numbers. That would, means that they don't have to be put in the doghouse with like Soluna and some of the other ones that aren't providing their monthly production updates. So that's great. Uh, we get to cover them a little bit longer here and we'll see how they do. I wish them all the best. Um, like I wish every miner here all the best because it's not an easy business to be in. It's definitely a tough one, um, especially with Bitcoin price coming down, hash rate growing up. It's tough to stay afloat. Okay. Uh, but that's it. Let me know what you guys think of all the stories here. Um, Mawson as well. And... We'll see what happens tomorrow, okay? Other than that, as always, the spreadsheet is going to be available to my Patreon members. Thank you to everyone there. Thank you also to all the YouTube members as well. I'll provide you guys with this um, screenshot of this dashboard as well later on uh, tonight or either tomorrow. And we'll see what happens next week. And like I said, if you enjoyed this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you guys in the next one.